Hi everyone, it's Monica. Welcome to my channel. I'm an internal medicine attending and I love making educational videos for all levels of doctor training. So this is part two of my discharge planning series. So if you haven't seen the first video yet, stop this video, watch that one and come back. So in that video, I go through the long list of items that you need to keep track of when you're doing proper discharge planning. In this video, I'm gonna give general tips on how to keep track of all those things. So let's get started. So tip number one, or rule number one really, discharge planning starts on admission. So as soon as you're meeting that patient for the first time, during that initial history taking, you should be collecting information that's going to help you with discharge planning later on. Now, there are notable exceptions, of course, like if you're admitting a patient to the ICU, patient's unstable, the patient's crumping, no, you're not gonna take 20 minutes to get a detailed social history. Of course not. You're gonna medically stabilize that patient first and you'll go back and collect that information later. I'm talking about a stable medicine admission where you do have that few extra minutes, then I do highly recommend asking some questions to save yourself time later. So what kind of information do you need to collect? So one is you need to understand what the patient's living situation is. Where do they live? Do they live in an apartment, a house? Do they have a lot of stairs? Who do they live with? How much care do they need? Are they able to bathe themselves, feed themselves, transfer themselves safely on their own? Has the patient had a significant decline in their functional status recently? If so, they might need a physical therapy or occupational therapy evaluation. Does the patient already have home health services in place? because once a patient's admitted, those home health services get stopped and they need to be resumed on discharge. Another thing you wanna do that first time you're meeting a patient is to take the time to do a good medication reconciliation. I promise you it's worth it. Future you who will be doing the discharge medication reconciliation will thank you. So you're not only collecting extra details during your history, you're also noting specific things on your physical exam. Does the patient have any wounds, any ostomies, any tubes, drains, central lines? This will determine if they need a wound care consult, an ostomy care consult, and also determines what kind of skill needs they might need on discharge. I've actually seen some people build this into their physical exam template. Like they'll actually have IV access or drains and tubes as part of their physical exam. And, and I think that's actually a great way to remember to check for those things. Tip number two, have a discharge checklist on the bottom of your HMP and progress note templates. So I'm gonna put up an example on the screen here. Reevaluate this checklist every single day. Do not just copy forward and forget about it. Please reevaluate every day to make sure that nothing is falling through the cracks and that discharge isn't being delayed. Tip number three, know who takes care of what in discharge planning. Know who your team members are and what their responsibilities are. So in my last video, I mentioned that it takes a village to do proper discharge planning, meaning that it's not just the doctor, it takes the nurse, the case manager, the social worker, multiple people on board to properly arrange everything for discharge. So know the roles and responsibilities of each person. Like for me, at my institution, the social worker takes care of any homeless needs, any transportation needs, any medication funding needs, and then the case manager pretty much takes care of everything else. But my point is, you need to know who takes care of what in order to efficiently delegate tasks. Hey guys, so my camera totally ran out of battery and I had to stop filming, so that is yet another reminder for me to buy another battery for my camera. So I'm about to rush out to my night shift, so I'm trying to sit down and finish filming this video. But anyways, where I left off was after tip number three, so tip number four is to remember to mentally prep your patient before discharge. So my husband, who is a hospitalist, actually came up with this and I love this framework. So he likes to split the hospitalization up into three parts. So the first part is admission where you might not know what's fully going on yet. You're still working up the patient, figuring out the diagnosis. So that's like the really medically active part where you're doing the full workup, you're starting treatments. And then the second phase of the hospitalization is where you figured out the diagnosis pretty much and you're really just instituting the treatment plan. And then the third part of the hospitalization is where you're preparing for discharge. So discharge, again, doesn't happen all in one day and your patient does need to be mentally prepared for it. So every day you should be updating your patient in terms of how much longer you think the patient's gonna be in the hospital. So you can say something like, hey, tomorrow, if you're still doing really well, then we can probably transition you to oral antibiotics 
maybe monitor you for another 24 hours or so on the oral antibiotics and then we can discharge you home. So we were looking at maybe two or three days more of hospitalization. Something like that so that it's not like the day of discharge and you just walk in and you're like, all right, great, you're going home today. Because I don't know if you guys have ever done that before, but usually it does not go well. Usually a patient likes to be mentally prepared for discharge too, so that they can get anything ready that they need to in order for them to have a smooth discharge home. And the last tip, tip number five, is the mnemonic that I came up with for skilled needs. So remember, skilled needs are needs that require the care of a skilled professional, such as a nurse, physical therapist, or occupational therapist. And this determines whether or not your patient is gonna need, at the very least, home health services, or they might need to go to a facility for a short period after discharge. So what's the mnemonic? My friend will return for rehab. My M for medications, whether that's IV medications or medications that need prior authorization. Friend F for feeding, such as TPN or tube feeds. Will W for wounds. Return R for respiratory, such as sanctioning or tracheostomy care. Four F for foreign bodies such as tubes, drains, central lines, and rehab, R for rehab, such as PT or OT. So I hope that'll help you remember what to ask for and what to look for on an exam when you're first evaluating a patient to figure out what their skilled needs are gonna be for discharge. The bottom line is that discharge planning is a very long process where you do need to have a long checklist and you need to stay on top of everything day by day so that things don't get delayed and your patient gets everything that they need for a safe discharge. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions about discharge planning, please leave it in the comments. Also, I love when you guys leave suggestions for videos in the comments, so please let me know what you guys want to see more of. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.